MLB season is in full swing, and it has been a lot of fun, and it is, uh, has also led to now a lot of talks about who would be the MVP in each div- uh, conference, and looking at it right now, there's a lot of names that are that are brought up that they all have a very good, uh, very good case to be made for their MVP race, their M- MVP standings. So we're going to talk about MVP. We're also just going to talk about MLB. Uh, we don't have Blake here with us tonight just because he's got his own show, the Up Tempo Podcast. They're sh- they're live as we're recording, uh, and so it just doesn't work to get him on. Although he is the baseball guy, so we do miss him uh, right now whenever we're talking about all of this but we're going to get into it we're going to talk about the MLB it's been really fun and especially for some of our teams uh, being able to watch again one of us not here uh, being able to record being able to brag about uh, their team doing so well right now in this MLB season but we're going to get into it we're going to talk about uh, MLB standings the the top teams right now MVP race all of that kind of stuff but before we do of course got to mention our sponsor for this episode, and that is SeatGeek, one of our most favorite, favoritist sponsors ever. Um, SeatGeek is amazing. Whether you're a fan of sports or theater, any kind of live events, really, uh, you can go to music events. Uh, you can get just about every kind of ticket. If it's a ticket, you can purchase it at SeatGeek. It's so amazing. Uh, they make it very easy uh, with a very seamless mobile experience you can download their app and go through their app and it makes it very easy to be able to buy and purchase tickets uh it doesn't get any better than the way that seat geek does it uh, they also grade every ticket from red to green based on their own value as well so you see that red dot you know that you can search around for a better deal search around for that yellow dot there's even a better deal out there for you you click on those green dots that's how seat geek does it they they color code it for you so it's very easy so you click on that green dot, you know that you're getting the best deal available to you. And it's easier to stick inside your price budget. Not only that, but their their app and on the website at SeatGeek.com, you can see the entire blueprint of the arena or stadium, wherever it is, wherever it is that you're going. You can see exactly where you're going to be sitting. And then on top of that, you click on the seats that you want to, you want to buy, the tickets that you want to buy, and it'll show you exactly the view that you'll get from your seat. SeatGeek is an amazing way to do it, and it's very easy. Uh, and I've never really had any bugs with it. That's another thing that I love about SeatGeek. And it's just super secure as well, which is the top reason to pick anything for any kind of purchasing. You want to know that your payment information, your personal information is secure. On top of that, whenever you're purchasing tickets, you want to know that they're going to scan in at the gate, at the door, wherever it is that you're going in for these events. So make sure to use SeatGeek. And we love SeatGeek so much here at Rising to the Occasion that we have partnered up with them to get you $20 off just for listening to this show. We give you $20 off. You use that code R2TO at checkout, and you get yourself $20 off. Go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app today on your phone or your tablet, mobile device, whatever the case may be. You download that, use that code R2TO at checkout, and get yourself $20 off. Amazing way to buy tickets, the best way to get tickets. So go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app today. Again, use that code R2TO. Get yourself $20 off. But let's get into it. First, got to bring in my co-host for... This evening, Jeremy, how doing, man? Doing pretty good. Then I'm kind of glad Blake's not here a little bit, just because if it's if it's usually you, your and my team going off, it's got to be me and Blake's team. Blake's team is obviously the New York Yankees. Then my team's the Minnesota Twins, and we just played the other night, and it was nice to see the Minnesota Twins have their moment. It was a one-one game, but I knew being um, being a Twins fan that it was just going to be. It wasn't going to be the way that we wanted to loosen to the Yankees. I believe it was five to one for a final, but hey, it's it is what it is. You can't win every one, but I'm doing pretty good. Then eager for tonight, just because, like you mentioned, obviously got to be talking a little bit about baseball, just because we haven't talked about it a little bit. Then, of course, going back into the NHL playoffs, we're going to be brunching that a little bit as well. But I know we got a lot to talk about, Josh. I'm going to cut the chat and let's get rolling with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, getting into. Everything that's going on, we talked about this last time, there's a lot of moments throughout the year that we can call the best time of the season for sports. Mm -hmm. This is one of them uh, because we've got so much going on. Being able to watch baseball, college baseball is really ramping up right now. I'm excited for for my Sooners, excited to see the the tournament pictures for conferences and get into that later on. We will pull uh, Blake by his hair to make sure he's on for that. Oh, for sure. Um, But let's, let's get into this because we've got a lot to touch up on. Uh, and starting off with just the, the overall standings and seeing 
everything that's going on here and teams that are just doing really well. I mean, you, you mentioned it. I mean, you, you guys uh, just started a, a series with your the, your twins and yeah. Lakes Yankees. Uh, I mean, the Yankees are one of the teams. We'll start off right there with them. I mean, five to one, that's a really good, really good game for them, uh, being yeah. able to beat the twins. But uh, it's a series of three. Maybe the twins come back and win it's a couple. Possibility. Uh, it's it's definitely out there on the table. Yeah. Um, just looking at them overall, man. I mean, it's just it's the Yankees starting off there in the AL East. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm going to start up there just because the the AL East I think is the best division in in, in the MLB. Yeah. I think it's pretty hard to argue with that. Uh, that there's some argument to be made, but about maybe the NL East. Uh, I think that's definitely a very tough one, especially this year when you look at it. But last year we talked about this nonstop about how the AL East kept on going out and uh, winning. winning. You know, they, yeah. they they were all above 500 for most of the season, so that's that's inc- incredible. Now this season, just about everyone's there. I mean, the Tampa Bay Rays uh, aren't looking as good as they are, were last year, and then of course the the Blue Jays not looking so hot right now, but. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays are only one game back from being 500. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, everybody else, the Red Sox have been just dead on even. It's like one night I'm like, man, we just now we just now won a game and we looked really good. And then the next night you go Terminal. out and lose. They, they've been just dead on that 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 50, 50% mark and winning yeah. uh, just about every every night. But, I mean, at the top of the, the AL East, you look at the Baltimore Orioles, uh, who are on a really good last 10 games, but that – one of the best uh, last ten game streak uh, going on. Just talking about the the last like few games that we've been been watching and really throughout the season, mm-hmm. uh, the Yankees looking really hot too. I know that they're technically second in the standings over there there in the AL East, but to me, they are the best team uh, in the MLB right now, without a doubt. I mean, you look at the little things that the Minnesota Twins, you look at the little things that the New York Yankees easily do. They're just making it seem like it's like a regular routine at their basis. I mean, whether you got Juan Soto just out there launching bombs or Aaron Judge just doing typical Aaron Judge things, also launching bombs. And we didn't get the button made. We didn't get the bombs button made. <laughs> but, I mean, literally just the New York Yankees has just been absolutely dominant. It does. It just goes to show you, I mean, you look at the record, it, it may be 28 and 15. Like you said, technically they're second in the standings, but realistically we all know as a Yankees fan and as – just a Minnesota Twins looking at other teams, these guys deserve to be at the top of the spot just because of how much hard work and determination they've been putting in night in and night out. And it's not like they're they're getting close games here like two to one or three to two. They're putting up numbers and I mean you look at their season, just how they've been able to do it, they got a really, really stellar lineup to do it. And that's just one of the pieces of the puzzle that makes it so much easier to be able to put up the points for the New York Yankees. But I know Blake's probably shooting himself in the foot a little because I know if he was on right now, he'd be talking all day about his New York Yankees right now. But, no, Josh, the New York Yankees are definitely the – the team to be scared of in baseball right now. Yeah, I mean, you look at other other teams. We'll talk about the Braves. I think they're looking good. The Phillies are looking yeah, surprisingly Phillies looking good right now. Pretty good. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of really good teams, and that's going to happen every year. But it feels like the best paced team has been the New York Yankees so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, another guy you were tra- talking about dropping bombs. I mean, Aaron Judge, dude. I mean, that guy has been dropping. So this a is lot why of, we needed the bombs. Bro, yeah, I mean, because <laughs> uh, you know. 10 home runners, yeah. you know, so, and then 27 RBIs on the season. And then you look, you brought up on Juan Soto at 34 RBIs this year. He's been leading their team. I mean, he's, uh, I don't know what the standings are for that. I'm not really sure a quick way to look it up, but I have to imagine that Juan Soto has got to be up there in the top for RBIs right now. Easily has uh, to with, be. I mean, what probably like, he's probably played around 37 games at least. Probably at least 30. Yeah. At the so, bare minimum. yeah so, I mean, just, Looking, looking at everything, man. I mean, it's this this team is stacked. I mean, I think that this is the best season that we've seen from them, and, and the best start. And I think you know you don't want to get ahead of yourself in the MLB season. No one, I forget how many ga- how many games there are. Uh, way too many. <laughs> too many like, for us. To count. So, I mean, with with the MLB knowing how long the season is, you don't want to get ahead of yourself. But I think one thing that you can look at is how is my team pacing themselves. Uh, now that doesn't always tell you everything at this this point in the season because you know you, you you could have certain teams. I think last season we saw that a lot with with certain teams where they started. I mean the the Tampa Bay Rays were one. They started off super hot, yeah, and it kind of fizzled out. And obviously in the postseason didn't really pay out at all. No. Uh, and so you know there's, then there's other teams like Boston who started off really rough, worked their way and started started Grinded gaining and gaining traction yeah. and really rolling in, rolling into a snowball. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. That, that whole team, they've been stacked and looking really solid all season. 
Uh, and then the, the Orioles, too. I think the Orioles, they were a team that were underperforming a lot this year in the beginning to me. Yeah. Uh, I would say the t- first 10 games, I wasn't seeing it. And then we even talked about the Jackson Holiday uh, not not getting the, the start to his career <laughs> that we were hoping for. But they've had a really good uh, last last few games, you know, looking at yeah. what they've been able to do, 7-3 and three in the last 10 games. Yeah, uh, So, That's I mean, huge. yeah, the, the Orioles have looked – Really solid this year too, and I think I think they're another team that you're going to be looking at uh, in, in the future and, and saying that you know, and uh, towards the end of the season, anyways, and say, man, I think this one's uh, this is a, a good team that we're going to have to to face. I mean, you, you look at at what uh, Gunnar Henderson uh, or uh, uh, what's the dude's uh, Westberg, I think was was the guy that was leading their team yeah. for RBIs this season, yeah. uh, and so you know just. Looking at, at that that team, I think they're one of those teams too that they don't have those big star studded names like Juan Soto and and uh, and Aaron, Aaron Judge, Judge, you know, and, and looking at everything that they they've got, but they they have that chemistry. They have mm-hmm. a well rounded team that's going to work together mm-hmm. uh, and, and and get through the season. That's a big thing that helps you. You can have the most thorough lineup that you can ever imagine like for what you and I like to do in our fantasy leagues and stuff Mm -hmm. but I mean once you get into situations like this to where you have a team that knows so much chemistry upon each other you can you can seem like you're going to be the top dog of a team I mean it it goes to show I mean look at Rushman the other night had the walk-off homer for the for the win again for the Orioles I mean that just goes to show I mean you don't need monstrous depth upon a roster it's just a matter of the chemistry and how much each player is willing to put forward onto the plate and obviously it goes to show you the Baltimore Orioles they're obviously another team that you gotta be watching out for just it like I said it doesn't matter the it doesn't matter the powerhouse that you can bring but it just matters how much the chemistry that you can bring along the play and make those plays and just make it worth something yeah uh going over to the AL Central uh this is a really confusing division. Your team here and in, in the pack, and I told you earlier on, hey, you guys are starting off rough. Yeah, give it time though, because you're in the right division where you can make a run and you can do something with it. We were talking. I'm pretty sure they were second to last last yeah. time when we talked. Uh, you know, like talked a point MLB. four six two, and the... now they're up there. Yeah, at at fifty, pretty close to fifty six percent win percentage. Yeah, uh, they've been on a tear. We talked about it a little while back where they were on a 10, 10 game win streak. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Boston Red Sox finally put that streak to it. To I an know, end. but I'm pretty sure. Didn't you guys win that series? Though? Yeah, we won two so, out of three in the series. Yeah, and so I mean, just looking at, I mean, they they've they've been on a tear, uh, yeah. and, and last last ten games they've won six of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, not not quite, uh, not quite. To the to the streak, streak you know, yeah. like to that momentum build. But the Minnesota Twins are looking really good this season. And then you know, you even look at the the bottom of the the league, the the White Sox we talked about, who basically bombed their season. Uh, yeah, they they started off absolutely terrible, and I don't expect anything good to come from that team. Mm-hmm. But they're on a very very good roll right now too, sitting there at six six out of their last uh, ten games has have been a win. So uh, you know, just looking at, at that whole. Division. It's a very confusing division because I don't know who I would pick to win it. I know the Guardians uh, being number one right now, and then I think I think your your Twins are going to be right up there. Uh, and like Blake said too, I'm happy to see the Kansas City Royals doing something, kind of throwing yeah, their definitely. their hat in the mix a little bit. Um, but overall, this this is a really good division, and, and I'm I'm glad to see what your what your Twins are doing. I'll I'll cheer against against the the Yankees. I think I can I can make that that uh, a pretty easy. Yeah. Pretty easy one to root for. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, it's been, it's been really exciting to see the Minnesota Twins completely flip the switch. And like you mentioned the other the other episode, we talked about that. Ever since that winning streak obviously got going, it's just been a momentum going for the Minnesota Twins. And obviously, of course, somebody's team had to go ahead and put the flame out of the torch. But I mean, hey, all all good things are eventually made to come in that. But we look past that and now looking at the Minnesota Twins with a PCT of 5.585. Yeah. That's huge compared to where we were earlier in the season. Of course. I mean, I know we got a lot of baseball left them. I'm actually going to get the opportunity to go up to Minneapolis this year. We're going to go see the Minnesota Twins play up at the 4th of July weekend up in Target Field. So I'm really excited to go back there and see everything. Um, but no, I mean, it doesn't matter if, we're just relying on Byron Buxton, like a lot of people always say we are, which well, is the truth. But, I mean, everything else outside, I mean, you look at our closing pitcher for uh, Duran. I mean, he's just been 
absolutely throwing bomb you're naming burners. you're naming all of the names except for one that i know we'll talk about here coming up ryan jeffers, ryan jeffers has jeffers. been the guy yeah that's true he has been the guy he's leading the team in just about everything yeah. on at bat that's why he's uh, I'm i think not 31 jump to rbis i think i've got that down yeah. on my notes that's why he should be in the MVP further candidate. down yeah i mean yeah just he he's been I mean, playing he's, absolutely he's, lights he's out. gonna he's gonna be up there if he keeps oh, this on doubt. you keep this um, momentum but going. i had to pull up the twins schedule just so i can look at this because uh you know you you've the, the Yankees are the first ones to keep them, you know, low, low scoring yeah. in a while. I mean, you've you've had ten against the Blue Jays, you've had eleven against the Mariners. Uh, you, I guess let up ten against the Mariners, but scored six against the Mariners. Yeah. I mean, we lost uh, ten you know, and then, against Toronto. Yeah, and I then mean, uh, you know, I, I, if you look at what they've been able to do at bat. I mean, it's it's been phenomenal. I mean. Again, a lot of that goes to Ryan Jeffers with 31 RBIs on the mm-hmm. season so far. Uh, so, I mean, just looking at everything that they've been able to do, hopefully they don't wear one guy out doing everything. Uh, yeah, but hopefully, if they can, if they can kind of keep that that uh, that streak going a little bit, keep that momentum going, I guess. Uh, it's, I guess, game two of this Yankee series should be playing here in about 30 minutes, or I guess 10 minutes from when, when we're recording right now. Yeah. So. Yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe you take one on the on the Yankees and build a little bit more of, of a uh, uh, a moral momentum, you know, something inside and spark spark the team up, mm-hmm. get them going for beating one of the best teams, arguably arguably the best team in the MLB right now, uh, and just kind of keep on rolling from that. Definitely, but I mean, you you, you just got to keep the mindset going in the right direction because if you don't, then you're going to be in a world of hurt. But I know, Josh, you you obviously have seen that mindset. Same for your boss at Red Sox. If you get that 50-50 coin flip one night, it's fantastic. And the next night, it's not the best night. But, I mean, that's just how it goes in baseball. But I know, obviously, looking at the rest of the bracket, like you mentioned, the Kansas City Royals, they have definitely been, um, they've been on the rise as a lately. I mean, this is a team that has definitely always been – They've been up there just for talks and everything, but like that. But looking especially for this year, I mean, you look at them, they're 26 and 19. I mean, they're not far behind the Minnesota Twins, obviously, in the standing wise. But I mean, realistically, the Kansas City Royals, they've been proving a lot of people wrong this they've year. They've been kind of that, they've been very similar to the Red Sox uh, here recently, recently, but they started off hot. Yeah. And they've just kind of kept it going, but not pushing, pushing themselves the forward through, and, yeah. and really, really excelling at anything. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I'm going to the top team there in the central, uh, the Guardians. I mean, I've, they've they've just looked solid. I feel like they've been on one of those teams too that have just been on a good pace, keeping mm-hmm. themselves going, not not getting too far behind yourself uh, yeah. or behind the other team, and keep you know keeping yourself going forward. Uh, I mean, I, I think Jose Ramirez has been a guy for them all season long. I think really helping that offense keep on going and mm-hmm. keep them keep them ahead. Um, but overall, I, mean, I think they're I think they're going to be one of those. One of those teams too that that has a chance towards the end. If I had to put money on it, I would say the Guardians probably win the Central. But it's it's, it's such a tight race so early on in the season. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, anything is possible. Yeah, you literally can't you can't say right now. Obviously, this team is predicted to win. I mean, yeah. you can say all you want. I mean, you're a loyal fan to who you support and like. But I mean, we got a long road of baseball left ahead of us, Josh, and it's going to be anything but. Anything but great. So looking over at the at the AL West, on the other hand, we've talked about two divisions in in the AL and the American League that are looking good. Then we come to the third one that just looks like mm, garbage. Yeah, uh, you know, Seattle yeah. Mariners leading the the West. Uh, you know, the Texas Rangers haven't looked good. And then right behind, you know, so this is the part that that shocks me is that you've got uh, the the Angels, who which I, I guess you don't really expect too much from them right now. Um, after after losing, losing some some decent a, pieces, right? Yeah, just a couple. I mean. <laughs> but yeah, you know, then you've got the Astros, you've got the Oakland Athletics. That's right, the the ones that are going to be named Vegas hey. Athletics here uh, after a while, you know. But those those are the the standings where the Athletics are above even the Astros, a team who was just in the World Series what two years ago? Yeah. So uh, and then you know, you've got oh, the man. the Rangers who, who yeah maybe they're just on that that hangover that championship hangover, um, but they're they're sitting there perfect five hundred right now, 
uh, I don't really have too much to say about the West. No, I I sincerely don't either. The only thing I can really say about the about the AL West is just uh, nothing. I know it's been a ten game suspension for the Houston Astros pitcher for the, the yeah, mid incident. I forgot to bring that up. Yeah, but I mean that's about the only thing I can really say about the AL West. But I mean I know they said it's a ten game suspension and. Outside of that, there hasn't been a set amount of money that is going to be for a fine. But outside of that, I mean, you look at you look at the AL West. I'm sorry. I mean, you look at a team for the Angels. I mean, we're just used to seeing obviously Mike Trout now. I mean, he can only do so much for the Angels. But um, for the Oakland A's, I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a bittersweet thing to see. Um, the Oakland A's, when they get out of Oakland and then move down to, like what Josh mentioned, down to Vegas here in that situation for next year. But looking outside of that, I mean, I really don't have a whole bunch else left to say, Josh, about the AL West. It's just been – it's been a unfortunate thing in that division that we're not used to seeing. Like we're used to seeing the Angels and we're used to seeing the Astros obviously on top here. Then this has just been a complete roller coaster and roll reversal for this division. So yeah. looking well, – Go, going know. back, going back to the A's too. I, I, I'm actually, I feel bad for the Oakland fans, the like the yeah. actual Oaklanders. Um, but because I've I've seen all, all of that on social media, and I feel bad for that. But overall, to me, I'm I'm excited to see him go to Vegas. I want to I want to see a, a major. I want to see a major sports team. You know, every, every major sports team have a team in Vegas because it's it's a lot of fun. I feel like the Raiders have been more fun, but I wish it wasn't the Raiders. Um, I wish they would have completely rebranded them again. Black and gray. What's what's up with that? Why? And then you've got a, a logo that just looks like trash. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm excited for that, and I'm really excited for that. I want to go to that new stadium if they oh, get that built. If it looks like the 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 renderings. Yeah, kind of what they're what they're talking about. It's going to look like. Um, but before we get over to the National League, I want to first mention to make sure that you follow us on social media. You can follow us over on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Um, whatever you have, go ahead and follow us over there because we've got updates that we're k- keeping our followers, our listeners updated with. And one of those being, if you are in the Omaha area, make sure to stay tuned because we are going to start having some live shows in the Omaha area at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. Uh, that's one big reason why we were extremely excited to sign with with Herd at Sports and come over here and join them is because they've got a sports bar and grill. They've actually got two of them, so make sure you you look at the La Vista. Uh, it's right there in the Omaha area. But Friday, May twenty fourth at six thirty p.m. Central Time. So make sure to go over there at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista, uh, not the Gretna location. Make sure to go to the La Vista location. That's where we we will be. Um, and you can check us out. Again, that's Friday, May 24th. We're going to be going over. We're going to start this Friday, have a live show talking about uh, the SEC and start get get into spring football and kind of what we saw from spring football and leading ourselves into college football season because we're getting closer and closer every day. Um, And then on May 24th, uh, Friday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m., we're going to have a live show, but it's not just a live show where we're sitting here and you have to watch us through the screen. You can come and be there in our in our live show by going to the Sports Bar and Grill there, uh, the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista, Nebraska. So come, come check us out. Uh, we're going to be there talking about the Big Ten teams uh, and talking about really just the top top ten teams where I think we're going to go from based on odds to win the, the uh, conference championship. We're going to go through uh, these next few weeks doing a live show on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. So stay tuned for that. The best way to keep up with us is by following us on social media where we post all of our updates. Mm-hmm. So make sure to go check us out on there. But let's go ahead and jump into the A or sorry, the NL. So the National League, starting off a team that we've already mentioned. Uh, again, really, really the top two teams in the in the NL East are again another team that could be argued as the best team. Mm-hmm. You got the the Phillies looking really good. Uh, they've been sitting there at eight and two in the last ten games. Uh, that's that's not a bad record to have no. for if you can keep that going nonstop. You're going to be looking pretty good throughout the season. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the Atlanta Bra- Braves right behind them, not looking as hot recently, but we know what they're capable of. Uh, and I don't know what it is with them. I saw uh, Blake actually post something here recently about you know not playing guys so, so you know year round. Yeah, maybe you should learn to take a break here and there, and that might be why. But I feel like every year you start to see an injury bug. Uh, with the Atlanta Braves, and it starts to affect their key players. And even if it's not an injury bug, it's just you can tell that the gas tank is running low. 
Uh, and so I, I don't know what it is with them, but I have no doubt they're going to be in the postseason. They're going to be looking hot in the postseason, and they're going to be a team to beat. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the Nationals not looking good, uh, Mets and Marlins looking like buns. Yeah, the the bottom of the NL East is like you said, it's been buns. I mean, it's it's been anything but hot for the bottom three teams. But obviously, talking about the top two teams for first off, talking about the Phillies. Obviously, you can't forget some guy named Bryce Harper. I mean, he's been he's been playing pretty pretty good for himself. I mean, I know coming compared to the other night where bases were loaded and he didn't get the the grand slam like he always tries to him get the get the crowd bumping up but i mean it was still a good effort on Bryce Harper and the entire team's um overall game set that they had but fortunately they weren't able to win it but even talking about the Atlanta Braves i mean they've just been they've been obviously another competitive team like you mentioned these two teams are obviously they could be the best if not the two best teams in the national league but i mean whether it be Ronald Acuña or Anybody else, obvious on the Atlanta Braves roster? I mean, yeah. they've just been playing electric, and I mean their their last ten obviously may not be like what it is for the Phillies. Their last ten is six and four, if I remember correctly. But I mean, you still got to think for that aspect and ratio. We're not far behind these guys. We could anything can easily happen. We have a lot of baseball left. They could have a bad month. They could have a bad remainder of the season. Or and really all you have to do is just look good enough in your conference. You exactly. don't have to worry so much about uh, falling too far behind them. And, and they're so close, like you said, too. I wouldn't worry. Um, and, and a guy on the, on the, on the Braves to bring up, too, uh, is – you know, uh, with Mar- Marcel Azuna with 41 yeah. RBIs. We talked about Juan Soto's 34. Yeah. You know, Azuna has been on fire leading his team. Uh, much like how we talked about with Ryan Jeffers yeah, and, and how well he's re- he's leading the team, but yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's been it's been it's been crazy over there. I think that's that's definitely the, another. If it wasn't for those bottom three teams being so terrible, you'd say, man, this is this is Stacks. right up there with the with the AL East with for the best division. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's not, you know, it just no. isn't. Uh, going over to the a- the NL Central, I, I'll start off with the Reds. I feel like it's so crazy, especially after. Ellie De La Cruz and see, seeing <laughs> everything that surrounds him, seeing yeah. how bad that team looks. Uh, I really had high expectations this season. I think we talked about them. Yeah, we did. Uh, previewing the MLB season. But I, I had higher expectations out of the, the Reds than what we're seeing from there. They're at the bottom of their division. Uh, and the, you know, they're, they're sitting there 18 and 25 right now, 2 uh, and 8 in the last 10. Just, I, I, I wouldn't have expected that from the Reds. No. Uh, and then, you know, you, you, Go through that division uh, at at the top of the division. Uh, you've you've Milwaukee. got the Cubs and Cubs and, and Brewers, yeah, um, which are two teams again, two teams that are one hundred percent in the race, uh, especially with as hot as they've been. Absolutely, but I mean, it, it it really does kind of baffle me a little bit going to the bottom of the uh, bottom of the Central for Ellie, a guy like Ellie De La Cruz. You look at his power that he has, and obviously breaking the speed records from throwing to first base. Yeah. You look at his strength that he has, being able to launch bombs, then his speed ability, literally, if he's got to be the fastest guy in baseball. In, as I, of I haven't seen a dude as fast as he is. I the, mean, the in, in the park home run that he had, that's uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was about. in the park grand slam that he had a while yeah. back. Yeah, uh, that's that stuff is just insane. You don't see that, and I mean, he's so young. That's the thing that he's so young, and he honestly, like, when you look at him run out there, he looks like another version of Tyreek Hill just running. Like, you literally blink, he's gone. And he, I know they've they've done a lot of stats, especially with Ellie De La Cruz, from stealing base ratio for how fast he's able to steal from first or second or from second to third. Then he's the only guy that I can physically say I've known and physically seen, not in person, but obviously watching on television, steal home base. I know it's it's been done before, obviously, but it, you don't see it a lot on TV. And if you do, man, you got some good odds compared to what we have. But, I mean, Ellie De La Cruz has just been absolutely electric, but it's just really unfortunate for what the Cincinnati Reds are able to do. But obviously, now going back to the top of the the Central for the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago Cubs, both of those teams obviously have been playing really, really good baseball as of right now. I mean, for the Milwaukee Brewers, being six and four in the last ten, it's been 
It's been a really good series for them, obviously. Then um, I don't I don't remember who they exactly got this upcoming for playing against, but right um, now they're uh, going against the uh, Ast- the, Astros coming up. Yeah, Astros? I guess okay. Astros. T- it'll be Friday that they start that one. Okay. So yeah, they're they're in a series with yeah Astros. Yeah. But I mean, even looking out the second spot for the Chicago Cubs, I mean. They've been they've been playing really really good baseball as well. I mean, I know they got a series going on with the Atlanta Braves, if I remember correctly. But I mean, for what Chicago's been able to do, obviously for um, for Tochman for on the Chicago Cubs, he's been playing really really good. Then for everything that's been falling into the place for the Chicago Cubs, it's just been. It's been pretty electric, and then I even got the opportunity to – I was in Des Moines last week. got to see the minor league affiliate for the Chicago Cubs for the Iowa Cubs, and even yeah. even some of the players that um, that could get the potential call, they got some really, really good players in the minors that can easily come up and show them that, hey, I may have been playing in the minors for a while, but, hey, I'm another guy that you might want to worry about. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, with, with the Cubs, too, being led by guys like uh, – uh, Chris Morell, uh, yeah. you know, you, you, you've got guys like him or Horner, uh, you know, you've got you've got dudes on their squad too. They're one yeah. of those they're one of those teams that they've definitely got those dudes that are going to step up and, and be there mm-hmm. night in night out. Uh, and then uh, you know, even the one of, one of their one of my favorite pitches pitchers too. Um, he's got a cool last name too. I can't uh, Jeff Steele, no uh, Justin Steele. Justin Steele. Justin Steele. So okay. I mean. Yeah, they, they've they've got they've got some good squ- good guys on their squad that step up and and they they've got guys that you can remember their name from night in and night night out uh, and be able to rely on them as well. Yeah. Um. But let's see, going on to the last division that we've got is the NL West. Um. NL West, we've got Dodgers. Uh, they've got a couple of guys on their team. Uh, you could you could say Dodgers' best team in the league. Based, based on, on roster. roster, yeah. Based on roster, best team in the league. They're still hot and they're still on oh, fire. They're 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 the one of the top teams. Uh, you know, when you when you've got a guy with the last name Otani on your team, you're going to be a good team in the MLB. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, looking looking at their roster and everything that they've got over there, everything they brought in this off season. Uh, I mean, just bringing o- Otani alone was was enough. But yeah, I mean, uh, the the Dodgers are. They're a scary team. They're kind of like what the Golden State Warriors were back in the day. Whenever, whenever they just had Steph and Clay, uh, you know, showing up, it was scary. And of course, then you had Draymond and and Iggy, and then all of a sudden you add a guy like KD yeah. over to their team. And man, now how much scarier are they? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's how this team feels to me when you're when you're comparing the two. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you may have obviously mentioned some guy named. Uh, I don't know why I just really drew it. Otani? But yeah, Shohei Otani. Yeah. But you also forgot another name that uh, has Yama, always Yamamoto, been. Yamamoto. Uh, Mookie Betts. Uh, yeah, Mookie Betts. You can't forget he's, Mookie Betts. He's been a star this yeah, year. Yeah, he's been an absolute star. I mean, and, obviously. And especially transitioning over to shortstop and doing it as mm-hmm. as, as smooth, smooth as, as he possible. has. Yeah, he's he's been he's been phenomenal. That's the thing that you see why he's obviously won Golden Gloves. Yeah, he's just been his transition obviously for now to shortstop. It's just been like he's been playing his his whole time in in the majors. But I mean, you literally look at the Dodgers. I mean, this is obviously a team that you know when you go to L.A. You cannot just not forget to mention the Dodgers. I mean, you look at what they're able to do. Obviously, whether it be. Um, uh, well, uh, Michael Grove for out for the Dodgers, or even like Gavin Lux, obviously on the bunt. I mean, this this roster has definitely been something to where you you have to necessarily watch out for the Dodgers. I mean, they may have some stellar key pieces of the puzzle, but I mean, obviously, there the re- there's a reason why they're number one. Well, and, and yeah, and, and Mookie's been good in in the fe- in the infield, but then also his on base percentage is is insane too. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so that's that's something with him. And of course, you got Shohei. He's been a designated hitter. Just imagine how much more dangerous they'd be if he was healthy oh my in, in the mound. Uh, I mean, you put him in the mound. This is a really scary team. And I have a feeling like that's what they're waiting for. It's like, hey, you stay healthy until we reach postseason time. I mean, if we that's can keep on, if we can keep on winning without you in the mound, let's just keep on going. No kidding. And then postseason time, you put him in the mound if he's healthy by now by then. Might um, as well give him the because <laughs> I I don't I don't really understand his injury and what he can and can't do uh, and so 
I assume that's probably what they're doing. Hey, let's just keep you as me. keep you as healthy as possible because two way players are, is is a dangerous thing, especially being a pitcher yeah. because you're already putting all of that. He's sitting there throwing 95 miles an hour with ease. Yeah, uh, you know, and he can throw it over 100 without putting too much into it. My elbow just so, hurts. Thinking yeah, and about so that. Just thinking about how much wear and tear he puts on his body doing that. And he's usually a two-way player, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But when he was with the Angels, he was a two-way player most of the time, the and carrying time. that team. Uh, without him, they would have been like they are this year, yeah. <laughs> at the bottom of their division. No kidding. So, uh, you know, it's it's a really smart thing if that's what they're doing. Uh, and then, of course, you've also got the Padres over there on the West at second. Really, the rest of that division doesn't even look good. It's it's crazy it's when you crazy. look at the difference from top to bottom. Really, from just the the number one to the to the number two is such a, a drop-off. I know. Um, but the Dodgers, definitely one of those teams. One team to, to shout out is the Rockies, starting off as terrible as they started off, and now all of a sudden, uh, I mean, here, seven here, and three here they the are. Last ten. Yeah, I mean, they're, the last 10 games have, have looked pretty solid. Uh, I mean, they're, they're I think, like 13 games back, but they're, they're up there. Up. I mean, they're if they can keep this streak going, who knows what they're able to do, and especially, again, another division where you could jump up to the – the second Double. in your division, uh, and, and at least have a little bit of pride over the other other few teams there in, in your division. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, it, looking looking through the MLB, it is it has been really fun. Uh, a fun thing for me to be able to look at is whenever we tar start talking about the MVP race and everything that that holds, uh, and that's definitely a really fun one. Uh, looking at the MVP race, if I can get this list pulled up. Um, Starting off, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start off in the AO uh, over in the American League. Ryan Jeffers with the Twins. He's been, again, like we like I mentioned, on fire uh, 30, 35 games. He's had nine home runs, Bombs. 30 RBIs, uh, 21 runs. Yeah, he's sitting there at a 292 uh, batting average, thir 371 on base percentage. He's been absolutely insane. Uh, and then you've got Kyle Tucker over with the Astros, another guy that has to be mentioned when, when you talk about this race for the MVP. 13 home runs, 29 RBIs, 28 runs. Uh, I mean, 277 uh, batting average, 399 on base percentage. Uh, he he's actually making the case. You know, that's when mm -hmm. you're starting to see guys. I think Ryan Jeffers, a few more games in, you you've got so much season left to go. Uh, you start to see him kind of come up, and then you've got Bobby Witt Jr. with the Royals again. Kansas City, Kansas City, making their name hurt again. Uh, he's he's sitting there looking really good. Uh, he's had uh, only five home runs, but, uh, you know, t the 21 RBIs, 38 runs, uh, you know, looking at what he's been able to do with his batting average at, at a 304. Anytime you can keep that above a 300, you're looking pretty solid and uh, almost 370 on on base percentage. So so he's an, he's another dude that's looking really sol solid. And then I, I brought up Gunnar Henderson. He's been a dude that has caught my eye, especially over there with the, the with the Orioles, sitting there with 12 home runs, uh, 27 RBIs. 30 runs, 264 batting average, and 339 mm -hmm. on base percentage. And then the guy that I feel like is the man to beat for this this award uh, over there in the AL, uh, Juan Soto with the Yankees. He, he's got nine home runs, 34 RBIs, 27 runs, uh, 314 batting average, on, uh, 414 on base percentage. The dude has been on fire. He's obviously leading the way, and I think he's going to be leading the way for quite some time. <laughs> I don't think anybody is going to get in his way, to be completely honest with you, Josh. I mean, literally, you look at Juan Soto and what he's been able to do. It's just been it's just been like the way that he's been wanting to go for his career. And just even, even yet alone this season, he's been putting up absolute, I wish I had a button, bombs. I mean. <laughs> We're just going to get one to put, put right over there next to you. Just perfect. put it right there so you can. Then, literally, it's Bombs, but I mean, literally, like I said, it's just been an absolute milestone for Juan Soto and just his time that he's been obviously with the New York Yankees. I mean, it, everything has just been, like I said, going into play, and he's obviously finding the right ways to to, hit, to get the ball all the way on the moon is what it seems like for what you see him launching off the bat. And I mean, it, literally, he has probably, if not. One of the fan, the best fan bases up in the Bronx in New York. Their their fan base is absolutely unbelievable. I know Blake. I I really wish he was here because he can kind of go off a little bit because I know he's told both of us how much their fan base is truly unbelievable. And then, of course, you got the Rowdies up in um, I believe it's in left field. Um, but no, literally, if 
if you're gonna say you beat Juan Soto for an MVP race, I would I would suggest retiring, but just because I don't know if anybody could else do it right then and there. Yeah, I mean that's that's it's a tough one, and then. Uh, yeah, he, he's he's leading it for sure. In the oh, AL. for sure. Uh, looking at the NL, you've got uh, Alec Bohm. I'll kind of speed through these. He's he's doing really well with the Phillies. Uh, Marcel, uh, I brought him up. Marcel yeah, Azuna for, for the Braves, and then you've got uh, William Contreras. He's the catcher for the Brewers. Uh, he's he's been looking really solid. And then this is what we're talking about with the Dodgers. How stacked their roster is with Shohei and Mookie right there at the top. Uh, I feel like one of those two guys. I think Mookie has kind of been the guy to beat when you talk about this just because of everything he's been able to do. He's playing on the infield where if Shohei starts starts pitching, he's going to steal it. He's going to oh, steal the show for sure. Uh, you know, Shohei's got 11 home runs, 28 RBIs, 33 runs, 354 batting average, uh, 422 on base percentage. And then you look at what B- Mookie's been able to do uh, at bat. You know, we've talked about how good he is at shortstop, but seven home runs, 28 RBIs, 35 runs, 341 batting average, 440 on base percentage. I mean, just absolutely insane stats for a guy who's tearing it up on both offense and defense. I mean, what more can he really do? He's just, you look at his stat wise, he's just been absolutely tearing it up. I mean, like I said, if there's, if there's any person that can beat Juan Soto and the MVP candidate, you might suggest retirement, but I know these two guys, they can easily definitely be the kind of people to put a run easily for Juan Soto's money. But, I mean, I'm still sticking with Soto as of right now, but, I mean, with how Mookie Betts has been able, been obviously playing, then same with, of course, Shohei. I mean, you look at what they're able to do and just – I mean, if, if you were to put money on both of them, I, I want to look that up later and see, but if you were to put money on both of them to win in, the, in their own conferences, I mean, you probably right now, I mean, they're both sitting at pretty decent odds, I'm sure, this probably. early in the season. But as as fire as they are, I feel like it, it would come down to an injury to bar you from, oh, for uh, sure. for, <laughs> from either for of sure. them winning it, especially how hot they are right now. For sure. But uh, I guess are you ready to talk some NHL? What am I not Get ready over. to talk about I'm not really NHL. ready to talk NHL um, because we're going to have to go back. Let's go ahead and start off. Uh, let's, let's start with the, the East first just so we can get it out of the way. Uh, my New York Rangers, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what happened because we were talking about it. You know, they scored one. They kept that one, one score lead. Third period comes around, and they just keep on trying to play safe, safe. instead of just playing hockey the way that you're supposed to play it. Uh, I, I feel like they just try to play 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 it really safe and keep that one score lead instead of going and attacking, doing what you do best, just go score another goal and, and try to secure this game. Yeah. Um, because if you can take that two score lead, I feel like you're, you're looking pretty all right, you know, and you're going to, you're going you're gonna to do just fine. Um, but then they ended up uh, allowing three more scores in the third period uh, to lose four to one, pushing that to a game six. It's starting to make me nervous because you see all these teams that blow the three, one lead and you make fun of them and you tease them. You, th- you think the Rangers are going to be able to be able to th- blow a three-one lead down to a? Yeah, I mean, you, you do have that that little bit of a uh, quote-unquote curse, which we've already proven isn't necessarily there. Yeah, but maybe it just yeah, maybe the yeah. curse just rolled over to the second round for the Rangers. That's what I was going to say. The curse might be rolling over to the second round, like we were talking with Marissa. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to have the curse thrown on your back, but if you get that first series went out of the way, you got to worry about the rest of the time in this playoff. But I mean. That was definitely something that you and I were talking a little bit back and forth about that game, obviously. Do we expect did we expect New York to close it out? I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I said yes, I expected New York to close that out. But I mean, once once I saw New York take the one nothing, they're like, Okay, this is probably gonna be a really close tight battle, but then I I got away from looking at scores for a little bit and then I I got a message from Josh over here. I'm like, What the heck did I just witness here? And I'm like I'm going to be completely honest with you. They just – Josh said the best. They played too conservative. And the Carolina Hurricanes just be able to put pressure on Shesterkin, and they were able to get the puck back in the back of the net. And it just it just goes to show you, you who cares about a curse here. You just got to put that full 60 minutes here, and you got to play not conservative. You got to play aggressive here. I mean, it's – at times, yes, you have to play a little bit conservative, but in the at the end of the day, you still have to go out there and physically play your game. And at the end of the day, Carolina, they just 
they just played their game, and now we're going to a game six situation. Yeah, they, they got into that desperation mode for, for yeah. Carolina and for New York. I think they just got too comfortable, and then it just saying, started. It got really sloppy. Passes were not being there. That's what Shots weren't say. getting on goal. Um, going over to the other game over there, uh, you've got uh, the Stars and Avalanche. Uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll jump over to the West for that one uh, just because that was in the same night. Um, but Stars and Avalanche, uh, I, I we talked about it where I thought, the Avalanche would come out, take one. I think they can take this. I don't think they're going to now because, you know, especially after getting the big news that would have broke as we were recording, uh, that uh, uh, Nachuskin, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he got suspended uh, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just he's suspended. a little bit of time. Uh, hopefully, he can get some help and figure out what's going on because that's a key player for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he was. I'm pretty sure he was the. Uh, tied for leading scorer in, in the NHL this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, losing a guy like that, uh, it it's, it's yeah, it, it hurts a lot. And now you go down three to one. That's not a position any team wants to be in, even though it happens, even though it's possible. You could win three in a row. A three in a row is a lot harder than just two in a row. Yeah. So, uh, you know, looking at it right now, I, I'm, I'm feeling the stars. And, and we I talked about this too. I, I felt like the Avalanche can pull it out, but the stars are the team to, to that are that the, is going through. Uh, in, in the West. I feel like the Stars are just the team to beat over there. Without a doubt. I mean, the Stars have just been absolutely playing unbelievable. And you obviously look at the roster having Robertson, Ben, and the list just keeps going on and on and on. They're able to find ways to put the puck on the back of the net. And it also kind of helps a little bit. I wouldn't say for Dallas's sake, but for – no, excuse me, if not for Colorado's sake, but for Dallas's sake and obviously having Matt Duchesne on their roster, like I mentioned in the last episode, that obviously the former Colorado Avalanche star player now playing against his former team. And it's, it's definitely showing that the Dallas Stars are here to make their point known across the league and say this is going to be – our year and the Dallas Stars just been obviously playing, like I said, electric. And the Colorado Avalanche, I mean, it, it, to me, it just seems like they're not playing like to their full potential. Like, I understand the Dallas Stars have a great defensive core, but just trying to get the puck into the zone for the Colorado Avalanche, it's, it's been a big struggle. And you see Dallas take advantage of that and turn it over, and they go on an odd man rush or they get a full regular breakout going, and the Dallas Stars have just been honestly controlling the Colorado Avalanche. And it's definitely a surprise to them, but do, I don't expect to see Colorado go out in game five. I think they're going to come back with a vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, like like we mentioned, I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna be ended in five, but I I, I do see him taking one. Yeah, but I I think that this has gotten out of hand, and now you lose a yeah. star player. Man, I don't I don't know. It's it's I I don't see the energy from them the same way that you see from the stars. The stars right. are scoring a lot. They're yeah. they're just flying all over the ice, and they're they're the more aggressive team. Yeah, and that that's ultimately what matters in playoff hockey. Yeah. Uh, let's keep it in the West and talk about the Canucks Oilers matchup because uh, we've talked about this one. This is going to Game 7. I don't see another way around it. The way that it's been back and forth, back and forth, uh, the Oilers take one to tie it up 2-2 two to two in Game 4. They're going to be pushing that to a Game 5 now, and and, and who knows what, what can happen after that. Maybe but it's possible. Looking at, looking at what the Oilers were able to do against the Canucks the other night, winning 3-2, to two, a very tight game, and it's been a really tight series overall. It's been by one point every single game this series so far, and one of those games went to overtime. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and, and looking at what they were able to do, man, I just – I feel like the Oilers are going to pull this out just because I don't believe in the Canucks. They're not used to being here. I know that they were the better team in the regular season, but this is – the regular season isn't the postseason. Right. That's not playoff hockey. This is playoff hockey, and, and right now I just feel like Edmonton, they were, they're able to get more shots on goal. Uh, they're, they're, they're able to just – everything that they do, they're, they're able to control the puck better. Uh, I, I feel like they're just the better team. They should be the better team. They should be the team that comes out on top. Um, but who knows? I mean, they, they were able to win it, tie it up 2-2 two to two to keep themselves alive. I mean, the Edmonton Oilers, for what they were able to do in panic mode, I wouldn't say panic mode, but in the last last couple minutes, obviously, in the game, to be able to get that game winner, that was definitely – I wouldn't say it was luck. It was just a great feed from behind the net. Was that right? one uh, Bouchard that yep. went out? Yeah. It was uh, Bouchard that got that shot right from the high slot. And that was definitely a great shot. Of course, obviously, the one thing that I always 
I always tell everybody, and my coach always preached it, get bodies in front of the net. Make it hard for that goalie to find the puck. And as you guys saw, it, it was hard for the goalie to clearly see the puck, and then the puck obviously got in the back of the net. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Edmonton Oilers, they, they find ways to, to get the puck in the net and, and get this series tied at two. But I'm – I'm not officially sold yet that the Edmonton Oilers can win this. I, I'm still sticking with the Vancouver Canucks here. I mean, I know obviously the regular season is over and that's that's all behind us now. But just looking what they're able to bring to the table night in and night out, their offensive has been great. Their defense, of course, has been great. Their goaltending has been great. I mean, you look at this obviously being the elite eight in the in the in the NHL playoffs, but I mean. This is the time where you have no room really for mistakes in this situation, and the I'm I like I said I'm I'm not completely sold yet, but I got the Vancouver Canucks coming out on top of the Edmonton Oilers here, Josh. Yeah, I I feel like I'm not completely. I feel sold. like the, I feel like the Oilers have to stake steal it. You know, I just I I don't see it an, another way around it. Again, it's probably just still me looking at the Canucks thinking. How are they here? <laughs> who 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 are who, who is are this you? Team? Uh, why are they in the postseason? Yeah, uh, going over to the Boston Boston. Uh, Boston Bruins against the Florida Panthers. Uh, this has been a fun series. We talked about it, man. The Florida Panthers. It looked like they were just going to start laying a beat down. You brought it up. What if what if the Boston Bruins pull something out and make the comeback? Do you think maybe the Boston Bruins said, "Hey, we blew a three one lead here last year." Now you were how about how about we just give you that three one lead and oh how the turntables yeah I mean who knows um, but I mean at, Bob Robsky did look good but then again I think you I have to credit this to the entirety of their defense more um, because he only had to face twenty nine shots yeah uh, and then it's really just a super defensive game which is not at all what we saw in like the first three games where no. we saw the winner score five six and six. Uh, so a totally different game there in game five, pushing it to a game six now. Maybe we start to see that scoring come back into play. If it's a high-scoring game, I'm giving it to Florida. If the defenses are playing, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it. You know, stick with uh, with the Bruins. I think if they can keep their defense holding them down to only 29 shots, you know, because I've been watching a lot of the Canes. That's yeah. a team that sits there and shoots over a hundred times a game. Exactly. Uh, you know, maybe like 60 of them on on net. Uh, so you know, hey, then, then put, you come over here. That. You come over here to this one where you've got 29 shots on net. If you're if you're Sergey Bobrovsky, you've got to feel pretty good about your defense, and you don't really have to block a whole lot. You're coming out feeling pretty. You know, hey, I'm not so sore the next day. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I'm looking at the at the Bruins. If their defense can keep it up, uh, and and we talked about it too because Marshan went down, mm -hmm. uh, and so and you know, play. yeah, and, and so if, if he's able to come back in, I think that's huge for the team. But even without him being able to to win that game. That's really good, and and now you're pushing it to Game Six with a little little bit of uh, breath in your lungs. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, like I said, last year Boston had a three to one lead, and then Florida pulled that. So the tables definitely could be turning a little bit this year. But I mean, like you said, Brad Marchand not playing that was definitely a big key thing for the Boston Bruins, and obviously realizing it's one less physicality of a guy like Brad Marchand and what he's able to do. I mean, if you don't know who Brad Marchand is, you you clearly haven't been watching a lot of hockey. I mean, this is the guy that will literally stir the pot. And outside of stirring the pot, he's a great NHL player. He's been finding ways to light the lamp, make key passes to get the puck in the back of the net. And without him, the Boston Bruins obviously definitely had to adjust and get the lines clicking on all cylinders like he was still there but I mean obviously for Charlie Coyle just getting the getting the game winner I know there was a there was a review for it for the potential goaltender interference I I'm still on the fence a little bit for 50 50 but obviously like I've said in, in previous episodes there's a reason why I'm a fan and I watch in the stands and I'm not with the stripes on my sides and I'm not making the calls Josh yeah. but I mean back and forth between this this entire playoff series it's definitely been fun but going for the Boston Bruins I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to jinx anything, but I sincerely think we could, we could potentially get a game seven in this situation, Josh. So yeah, there we go. Winter, Winter Classic, Boston. I was just, just wondering. Maybe, that, maybe this is the good luck try. Hey, you him, can never know. That could be. Yeah, that there. could be the ticket. I'm pretty sure that one was from Boston. That could be the ticket. Maybe yeah. There, there's. We're gonna keep that there for the for the good luck charm of the 
Boston Bruins coming back. Yeah. Um, but let's go ahead and jump over to NBA playoffs, uh, kind of catch up on everything that happened there, going back to Monday when we were recording some of the games that would have been going on and already happened by the time that the episode was, was released. Yeah. Again, the same two teams playing again tonight. Uh, start off with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I was really happy about how they were able to, to – come back there in game four they mm-hmm. had to storm back to to really take away that lead yeah. um but they were able to to come out they they shot pretty well uh they, they they didn't start off shooting well that was the problem it felt like everything was just kind of poor shots taken uh really good defense by the Mavs overall um and then you know you you look at at what they were able to do in the second half and really put together uh that 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 chemistry and, and then you see SGA he had 34 points on the game it's huge uh, and seeing what he was able to do uh you know and, and so I think him stepping up for his team whenever it mattered the most uh that that helped a lot uh, and then one thing that we mentioned is you have to slow down there's two guys that you have to slow down if you can slow down just one of them you're doing all right if you can slow, slow down both of them I didn't think you're, it was I didn't think it was possible but you're doing really good and sure enough they they did exactly what we thought wasn't possible mm-hmm. slow down both Luca and Kyrie Luca with 18 points Kyrie with 9 another really good defensive game from him uh, and then scoring just enough uh man I, this this series feels like you should hit, hit the under Oh yeah That's just hang on Did you just say hit the under hit the under on this series that's how that's This, this is one's coming feeling. from a guy who will smash the smash over? Smash the over, and if if well, and and I'm not gonna hit the under, yeah, because that's not what I do. That's but not what you do. If I had to give you advice, don't hit the over on this one. This doesn't look like a series that you should hit a hit the over on. Yeah, I mean, with with what they're able to do, it like you said it the best. If you can stop one of them, it's great. If you can stop both, you're. It feels like you're having the best night of your life just because of how much points both Kyrie and Luca are able to bring in a single night. I mean, obviously for their chemistry and what they're able to do throughout this entire season, it's been second to none. I mean, you it seems like they've been playing for years upon years now, but I mean, just for what just from what they're able to do and getting the getting the rock passed around really well, then obviously putting up whether it be simple two-pointers or or beyond the arc beyond the arc floaters and they've just been finding a way to put the bucket in, I mean, putting the ball in the bucket. I mean, it's just been it's been electric for for these guys, and if you like, I said, if you're not going to stop them, then I bid you good luck for the rest of the night, just because it's definitely going to be a world of hurt if you don't get get them get them off of their game, to say the least, Josh. Yeah, uh, jumping over to the other game that was going on, and we said it was a really close one at the time, and it did stay close throughout the entirety of that game. They're playing again tonight, very close again tonight. Um, but Celtics going against the Cavaliers. Uh, we talked about without. Spider Mitchell, are you going to be able to keep, keep up. up and and be able? I mean, they they played a really good game. They, they only lost by seven points, uh, so it's a really disappointing loss. Knowing that if you did have Donovan out there, maybe this is a different game. Uh, and on and honestly, looking at Darius Garland and what he was able to do, he put up thirty points, uh, and that that was big for his team. Uh, you know, and then you had Lavert doing his thing and Stress yeah. doing his thing. So I mean, you had the whole squad, uh, and then also Evan Mobley. He's he's looking really good this postseason. Um, but one thing that you look at, what the, the really the difference maker for this Celtics team, we've talked about this uh, in the past. With y- you look at the main reason why they're not a good playoff team, and it's because you've got stars who show up in the in the regular season that don't show up in the, in post-season, the postseason, and specifically Jason, Jason Tatum. Tatum. <laughs> what does he do this postseason? He's got one of the, really the best team in the NBA. And he goes into the postseason and keeps on performing well, and he's still got Jalen Brown stepping up and doing his thing with 27 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Tatum putting up 33 points, uh, and then you you even have Pritchard come off the bench and he did pretty well. Yeah, uh, he played quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of time off the bench. Um, and what I'm hearing is that they don't have. Uh, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Uh, maybe I can maybe I can find it. Um, but o- over, overall, I mean, it, you you see their stars showing up whenever they need to. Uh, you know, and and doing what they have to do—that's what—that's what matters the most right now for for this Boston team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, between Jason Tatum alone and what he's able to do, obviously for the Boston Celtics. I mean, oh, Kristaps Porzingis. There, I was thinking unicorn okay. in my head, and I couldn't think Just of his couldn't name. Couldn't think of his name. Uh, Kristaps Porzingis. Apparently, he is out right now, uh, and so it, he didn't play at all. But the the concern that I have 
is that it sounds like he's not going to come back for the entirety of the, of, the, of the season. Really? So the concern I have is, okay, now you go, let's say you go place, you, you, you go play Denver, who is our pick for who we would think would be there. Uh, you go play Denver. Who's, who's going to stop Jokic? Who's going to guard Jokic? Good luck. I don't think they've got another big on their team that can they do don't. it. Uh, let's say the Minnesota pulls it out in that, that series, which I don't think is going to happen now. Hey. But let's say the Minnesota pulls it out in that series and goes on. Who, who's who's going to guard? You've got Cat and Rudy. Rudy Gobert. So you, you've got you, who's going to who's going to guard either of those two those two guys? Yeah. Uh, you just took your best big out of the game now. I mean, uh, you know, looking at at the possible matchups, even if it's a Thunder, I, I who's going to be who's going to be sitting there guarding Chet down low? Yeah. So I mean, you you look at the other three, and, and with the Mavs, I mean the Mavs are a whole different monster. So uh, maybe the Mavs would be the best matchup for him when I'm thinking about it. But overall, I, I think that's pretty pretty concerning. Whenever if you don't have Kristaps uh, Porzingis coming back in this and for the for the remainder of the postseason, yeah, definitely. That's that's definitely going to be a real big pain. Like it's going to be a, a thorn in your side for not having them back for the rest of the postseason. But I mean, even talking a little bit more about the injuries, I know I was. We were watching the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves game, and Cat went down for his knee. Then I know he just had that surgery, and them they were really, really concerned about him. But he did finish the game. But I don't, I don't think that it it didn't look pretty to say the least. But I mean, no. But going back to obviously we're talking about for the Boston Cleveland series, just literally just give the ball to both Jason Tatum and and Brown. I mean, you can literally just make a team out of them is what it honestly feels like. Literally, it doesn't matter. Even looking outside of, obviously, like you said, outside of those two key players, their entire bench has enough knowledge and skill to be able to go out there and look like a regular five-star team. They've just been absolutely playing electric, Josh, and it, it just goes to show you, obviously, why they have a three-to-one series lead over, over Cleveland here. And yeah. It goes to show. Yeah, and, and, and we expect them to beat Cleveland. We expect yeah. them to pull out. Uh, I, I expect them to close it out tonight. I maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll look like a fool like I did uh, on Monday night when we were talking, and then release it on Tuesday, and everybody's like, "What you said? You said that Boston was going to lose, and you said the Rangers were going to win. What, what's going on there? <laughs> maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a fool again." But let's jump over to the Pacers Knicks. Uh, you said you were watching this game. Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't uh, because again, you just see. Such Sloppiness. inconsistency with these two teams. Now you see have the the Knicks come back uh, and win. I think the Knicks have what it takes to to pull it out in this series. They tie it up, or no, not tie it up. They they go uh, up three to two, uh, and so they break that that tie. But now they're just one game away. Can they pull one out of these two? This is this goes to Game Seven. They win in New York. Oh boy, that's gonna be a crazy time. I do not want to be anywhere near there. No. But four out of six of their their guys came from the, that came off the bench. They had six bench players. Four out of those six scored points for them. Uh, their bench stepped up, and and specifically uh, what what Burks was able to do for him off the off the bench. But then you got Jalen Brunson doing his thing. That dude is just unstoppable. Damn. There's there's a different player that came out. He, he's a phenomenal player. Don't get oh, me yeah, wrong. There's absolutely. a different animal that comes out of him when his team needs him the most. Uh, he goes off and gets injured. What was that? Game two. two. Uh, and, and, and then comes back and just goes off. Uh, game three, they have a bad game. Then, or uh, I guess that would have been game four, have a bad game. Uh, but then all of a sudden you, you come out uh, here, here in game five and Jalen Brunson scores 44 points. Uh, I mean, you've, you've got a, an entire squad that's really working together really well. Uh, over there for the, for the Knicks, and so I think they they can be a good team. They've kind of got that college basketball kind of like a uh, who is who is some of the, like maybe NC like a U, UConn or... UConn type of feel to them. Maybe not a UConn because UConn was dominant, um, but, but NC yeah, State or... maybe like an NC State kind of the underdogs that that had the, the squad rolling and got yeah. there and started doing something. But I mean, they they were a number. Uh, I'm pretty sure a number uh, a two seed going into the playoffs. So. Maybe we can put them up there and say kind of that UConn feeling, but that's true. Uh, you know, not not quite that good. Maybe an Alabama feeling. Maybe yeah, there you go. Because I feel that's like good. Bama, Bama was good, but not great. You know. Yeah. Um, so, but regardless, just kind of that bad that college basketball feel to them. Uh, and I mean, they they can be a good team. Mm-hmm. They just don't show up consistently, and that no. makes me nervous for their their squad. But if the Knicks were to come out, and then they go on and they play Boston, and they end up taking Boston down. <sighs> And then let's say they go and they, they go win on and win it all. I don't think it's going to happen. Don't put your money on it. But 
I mean, that would be just be insane because the Knicks are not a team in the last decade uh, to to really worry about at all. I mean, they they said the same thing when R.J. Barrett made his made his debut with the Knicks. I mean, but anything's possible. I mean, when I was when I like I said, I got the opportunity to watch the game. It was not the style of play like you'd like to see. But the big thing that helped the New York Knicks is their defense and allowing the Indiana Pacers to to not get the ball in the net. I mean, there there was a point in time where the Indiana Pacers didn't get a single point in seven minutes. That's yeah. That's huge. Just in that killer aspect. defense. And I mean the the and obviously the New York Knicks, they were just able to to march right down the court and they were able to put points on the board. Then well, and Tyrese Halliburton doesn't look comfortable to me. He no, doesn't he, he doesn't feel he looks like he's it, out. It, of it doesn't it. it doesn't feel like he's out there balling the way that he can, you yeah. know, because he's a dog, but yeah. he's not showing up it, kind of like a Jason Tatum right now. Yeah, Honestly, that's true. like I don't want to say that about him because I like him a lot and I wish he would come out there. Uh, you know, there, there's there's Two Face, you know, from the Joker, or you know, from the Joker, from Batman. Batman. Yeah. Um, he's he's Two Voice. Have you ever heard that? He's got like two different, two different voices. voices. I've heard of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I, I don't know why he's not showing up in the key moments, but they need him. They need him to start shooting more. I think he only took nine shots. If that. Uh, and so they they need him to show up, and they need him to show up in a big way if they're gonna if they're gonna pull it out. Definitely. I mean, it. it it, it's at this point where we're in the postseason here. This is either make or break for your guys' cr- not career, but for the season, I should say. Because if you if you don't put up the points, we could easily be going home in the next couple of days here. So you definitely have to you have to find the right opening, and then you gotta you gotta put the shot up. And if it goes in, great. And if it don't, then you just gotta fight for a rebound. And just try and get the points on the board, Josh. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, uh, going to the last last team, or I guess the last uh, series to talk about. We've got the Denver Nuggets. Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm just looking up to see, see game six would be in Minnesota. I'm, I'm feeling like game seven would be in Minnesota as well. I just want to no, look that up. They should be going back to Denver, shouldn't it? Because I thought Minnesota was a two. Was was not was Minnesota not? A, oh no, Minnesota wasn't a one seed. It was OKC. No, were, yeah, it was OKC. It was OKC. Yeah, Minnesota's so then it would go back to Denver because I was yeah. like, I was like, it should go back. I, I was confused thinking that they were the higher seeding. So man, now it's, it's just like hockey two it's, two. Because I was one. trying to make my make my decision for sure based on that. Who who hosts Game Seven? Yeah, it'd be um, in Denver. But yeah, it'll be in Denver. I don't like that at all. No. Um, but going back to last night for us on Tuesday night, uh, Nuggets end up taking it. I I said I think the the, the team that takes it in Game Five is going to win it in Game Seven. I, I think that I think so far it's been home home wins uh for both these teams they've been winning uh you know you had you had uh, i mean not not entirely because the timberwolves started off with that two two games and then two games for for denver but now yeah. taking a three two lead you're in a very bad spot because for for the minnesota T- timberwolves um but i mean you need your guys to show up big in the next two games you need yeah. them to put it all out on the line uh and and one thing that it, it i think kind of hurts them is they don't ha- really have a whole lot of a bench. They don't have that depth to fall back on. No. And so you're got you got these guys out there for 40 plus minutes. You know, you've got uh I'm I'm counting right now th- three guys either at 40 or right at 40. Uh you know, ab- above 40 or right at 40. Right. Uh so I mean you you've got to get those guys off the off the court, and, you know, you cuz you've got guys like Rudy, guys like Cat, uh guys like Ant. Uh and so you know, you you have to get those guys off the court, give them their rest. I think because you see them they're they're hot. And they're really good, but you see them out there for so long. I mean, Ant for for example, he went five for fifteen, mm-hmm. and and that it starts to wear him down, especially the way he plays. He's yeah. aggressive. He'll <laughs> he'll run through a brick wall if he has to. Yeah, he will. Um, so I think they've got the formula to do what it takes, but they're just not putting it to to they're not putting it together. And on top of that, obviously, uh, how do you stop Jokic? Uh, that's that's a dangerous guy. Uh, he put up forty. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what do you do whenever he's putting up forty, and you got three other guys putting up double digits, uh, and then you've got uh, uh, what's his name, Braun, that came off the bench, put up a uh, double digit. So, yeah. you know, the Denver, they they've just got their number, and honestly, without without being able to slow down Jokic, what are you gonna do? Hope and pray. <laughs> That's about what you can do. I mean, you said it the best. It's it's one thing to have your star players on the on the court, but you have to limit their their time on the court just because like you said you wear them out 
that fast, then by the fourth quarter, they're just going to be gassed. And I know obviously that's what conditioning is for, but I mean, still, uh, one man's body is, he can only withstand so much in the situation. Then, like I said, that was another big key thing to obviously remember ever since the, the cat injury, like he didn't go out of the game, but obviously you can tell the excruciating pain that he had on that knee, especially it was the knee that he had surgery on. That was the big, that was, that was the big issue. But, um, at first, initially, just I thought... Just rub some dirt on it. Yeah, just rub some dirt on It'll it. It'll be all right. I mean, at, at, initially, I first thought it was like a poke to the eye just because he had his hands over his his head, but then realizing when they, they played it back, it was his knee. I was like, oh, boy, that's not going to be good. But literally, it doesn't matter for Jokic if he's if he's taking two steps to get down to the down in the bucket, or if he's two feet behind the three-point line and launching a three-pointer for the money. It, he's just been playing absolutely electric, and if you don't stop him... Your season's gonna be done. Yeah, I'm gonna put it play it simple. Just you got to find a way to stop Jokic, and if you don't, you're gonna be watching the rest of the postseason from the couch. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm excited to watch OKC tonight. I hope that they're able to win another one. Me uh, too. Just you know, take take that series. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm rooting for OKC. I really hope Minnesota can come back. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of who I'm cheering for there. Although I just I think Denver's Denver's a team that's so, so strong, hard to root man. against. Yeah, yeah, and they're just so good. Uh, and then obviously I think Boston's got it over there in the East, so I don't, I don't think anybody's going to be able to take it there. But that's all we've got for you guys. Make sure to follow us on social media, uh, and again on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. Uh, and make sure you stay tuned because we will be doing live shows. So live this Friday at six thirty p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned because then again next Friday, May twenty fourth at six thirty p.m. You can join us live. At the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill, it will not be the last time. It will be the first time we we're, we're there, but it won't but be the last be time. Last. Uh, and not only that, it won't be the last live event that we do where we invite you guys out. So make sure to meet us at the at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista, Nebraska. That's not in the Brett, Omaha no. area. Uh, so make sure to meet us over at the La, La Vista Herd at Sports Bar and Grill at 6:30 on May 24th. That's a Friday, so you don't have work the next day. Just come on out, uh, grab a few drinks, get some good good food. They got huge wings. They're like yeah, that big. <laughs> no, no, they're they're decent. They're pretty good wings. They're pretty close. Uh, you know, close. they've got some good food. So come come check us out. Have some food, uh, and talk some college football with us. That's right. Uh, and we're in Big Ten country around here, so we're talking Big Ten that night. But uh, also for our live shows, you should be able to possibly even call in uh, for our live shows. So maybe we'll start to open that up as well. We've got a new feature that we're going to be able to test out and see if we can see if we can get that rolling. But uh, join us Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, that that will be our live shows where we're going to start talking college football, start getting in the groove of getting ourselves used to a live show again. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, we thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button as well. Help us keep on growing. We thank you all so much for the support there. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us on those platforms. Again, follow us on social media uh, and find us over there at, uh, I think it's R2TO Podcast. I guess it's right there on the screen. I should be able to see that. But we thank you all so much for all of your love, all your support. Uh, We'll see you here live on Friday. uh, And I guess we'll see you until next time.